This is Levi Sim for PhotoFocus.com, and I am here with Matt Klaskowski. What's the, up? The Lightroom master in the house. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, You say that's all the, the Lightroom guys, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Um, and right now, you you just got back from a trip to Glacier National Park yeah, in Montana. Yeah, yeah, you used to live near there, didn't I, you? I've, I've lived around it's there, yes. Crazy, crazy place, man. It, it's is, it is my new favorite national park. Right. It is. It is. Right. I've never been, but it's now taken over. It is really incredible. The, yeah. I, I was a geology major as well. And oh, so, yeah? Yeah, so the, the yeah. morphology of the landscape there is it's just crazy. incredible. And, and this, well, it's in Montana, and if you read the, the license plates in Montana, it's big sky country. It is. <laughs> then right? you think big sky. Exactly. It's just these massive, massive puffy clouds all day long, which really in the summer, from what I gather, seem to dissipate right at sunset. <laughs> oh, a man. lot of times, oh, <laughs> which they so did. They did. I had, like I'm this, this the photo we're about to see. Yeah. Th that day, I'm like, oh, this sunset is going to be awesome. <laughs> And then about 45 minutes before, they just all the clouds go away. Oh, no. Oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and another problem with a big sky, and, and it's a big country, and so you're using a wide-angle lens mm -hmm. for a lot of this work. And, and that's, that's when your trademark moves, is a, is a wide-angle lens with yeah. beautiful compositions. But what's the problem with using a wide-angle lens? So, so uh, you know, I, I have a polarizer on quite mm -hmm. a bit. So I have, I have my polarizer on. I don't use my polarizer as much for the sky. Because that's what we always think of. Yeah, we think it'll make the sky, the sky blue, blue or yeah. whatever. Um, but you know what? In doing that, you can you can saturate your blues. You can, you can control yeah. your blues in post really simply. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just a slider. It's not like it's a lot of work. Um, and you can get into trouble, especially at some of those higher eleva elevations right. with the polarizer on. You can. You, it's hard to see in your camera, and sometimes you turn it too much. And the skies look fake. Right. The other part, so I, but I always love to have a polarizer on because I like what it does to the mountains and the the trees right, and to the, the foliage glare. and things. So it's, all it's really doing is removing reflection from everything. Yeah, I mean, here if I zoomed into this, you know, you can see the you can see the the before and after. So this is with the polarizer on, and then that's with the polarizer off. Right. Forget about at, the sky. Yeah, the haze in between you yeah. and everything is 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 showing more reflection into the camera. So the problem is is when you're shooting wide, you get this, you get this dip, this, this circle yeah. in the sky because you're, you're shooting so wide that, that you know, we know the polarizer works at a 90-degree 90 90 angle yeah. from the sun, and because you're shooting so wide, you're actually covering a larger area, um, and then you get that weird sky in there. So this tip is, is you know, I basically just kept the camera on a tripod, mm -hmm. turned the polarizer to where it affected everything a lot, and uh, and you know so I got I got the nice you know kind of unglary foreground. People think, well, Matt, can't you use dehaze and all that stuff? You can, but it, there's something that a polarizer does to the right. colors and the haze. It's, it's, even the foliage just ends up more yeah. green. It's not the like like leaves and pine needles are shiny. Yeah, exactly. And they're reflecting the sky and exactly. things, and it re eliminates that shine. So uh, so so what you do is you keep the polarizer cranked up, like mm -hmm. turn it so it really affects the photo. Take a photo. You're on a tripod then turn it to where it doesn't affect the photo as much, you know, just turn it to where it's off, and then take another shot. And uh, what we can do is go photo, edit in, and if you look at the bottom, it says open as layers in Photoshop. Perfect. So that'll stack the two images right on top of each other. And since you're on a tripod, they're, they're already aligned. Exactly, exactly. When I turn it on and off, you can see everything's good. Yeah. So right now, it just really becomes about selection. Um, I always just grab the quick selection tool, and uh, just kind of, just it just <laughs> it's quick. does a really good job <laughs> of, really of snapping in there. Yeah, um, got a little bit of, of weirdness on the trees there. I'm gonna go for it because I think because the sky's blue behind it, it's mm -hmm. not like I'm dropping in a different. It's sky. the unpolarized part of the sky anyway. Yeah, well, we should be okay. If not, you've got your select and mask uh, section, which sure. can help out. This isn't a selection tutorial. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll learn that for a minute. Yeah, um, so the idea is, and so here's what I can tell you: when when you make a selection. Um, we're going to add a layer mask to it. Best way to think about this is that when you make a selection, mm -hmm. whenever whatever's active in that's you know this, but uh, whatever you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> tell I'm me, anxious. yeah, whatever There's always a better way. Whatever is selected stays. Mm -hmm. So if I were to go click okay. on this layer mask icon right now, oh yeah, what's selected will stay, um, and that's Which not what sky. I want. If I right. click it now, right. I, I just did the opposite of what I want. So I'll undo. And, uh, and all you got to do is just hit select inverse. Inverse. So that's going to swap the and, and select the opposite thing. So now the foreground selected. Mm -hmm. So what? Remember what's selected stays. So now if I hit that layer mask icon, 
boom, just like that. And, and look at that. Uh, you get the rich green, sky. the the beautiful transmission right through to the yeah. to the rocks and things. And and I mean, you can even go like if you go to the properties panel on that mask, there's a density setting. That oh, density yeah. setting is like an opacity for the mask. Okay. So right now the mask is hiding yeah. that bad sky. The sky's not all bad. There's there's some good to it. Um, I just don't want it all gone. Right. But if I split the difference, you I can get a little bring more back, out of it. Yeah. You won't see as much of that that gradient in mm -hmm. the middle of the sky from it. So I can bring a little bit of the original back. I can bring a little bit of the blues back. Um, and then I like take this back into Lightroom. Just go grab your blue saturation slider right. if you want to go crank that up a little bit. But I actually think I, I think it's pretty good the, the way it is. This is how it looked. Um, it didn't really right. look like that when I was there. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is more or more indicative of how it looks. So real simple. And then when you're done, just hit file, save, and that'll bounce you right back over to Lightroom with uh, with that photo. Mm -hmm. So that's cool a great stuff. tip. Yeah, thanks yeah. very much. Things to think about like when you're out shooting, there's certain, you know, there, I like to get as much as I can right in camera, mm -hmm. composition, different things like that. You know, those are hard to, to change in post. Um, but sometimes when we're out shooting to know what I can do in post. Exactly. Exactly. You've got to know both your tools, your, yep. your shooting tools and your finishing tools, so that when you're shooting, you know what you're capable of, yeah. of finishing. Exactly. That's great. And exactly. that's always been the way it is in yeah. photography. So cool. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for that tip. No problem, dude. I, uh, I, I, can I plug my website? Please do. Where can we find you? Where can <laughs> um, we find more? So yeah, I do all kinds of stuff like this at mattk.com. M-A-T-T-K. Just mattk.com. Mattk.com. There's a, a when you go, you'll probably be hit with an email. Sign up. Sign up, and that way, I'll just send them out. I always send out when I do new tutorials. Yeah. Then we then like we know that. when there's so something new. You don't new have up. to keep checking back to the website. So. Excellent. Well, thank cool. you very much. Thanks, man. And thank you guys for joining us.